Speaker, uh, no. just to clarify something from earlier, um, is Kevin McCarthy a moron, and if so, why? Uh, I, I said earlier in my comments, science, 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 and science. On almost every subject that you can name, science is the answer. Whether it's the climate crisis, whether it's a health crisis, whether, it, whether it's our preeminence in the world in technology, science, 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 science. Uh, to say uh, that wearing a mask is not based on science, I think, is, is not wise, and that was my comment. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. I'm not responding to him. We're making our presentation here. Go ask him about what he says, okay? I'm sorry, what? Well, go, that's, that's not, that's a matter for the Republican caucus. We are full of responsibility and duty and patriotism and almost joy as we go into the 4th of July weekend, as we observe the birth of our nation, that we are committed to doing something that honors the vision of our founders. It's going to be a, a high level, and it's going to justify the support of the American people. It's not political, so I'm not getting involved in any discussion of what goes on in the Republican yeah, caucus. We'll want to take all of your difficult policy questions, but why don't we begin? Yes, ma'am. Madam Speaker, I want to ask you, after this week, obviously this was a momentous moment for the Democratic Party, but you also had to deal with the censure vote this week. You had to deal last night with uh, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy's eight-and-a-half-hour speech. What do you feel like the tone and tenor of the House of Representatives is at this moment, and what can be done to try to bridge some of those gaps in trust? Well, let me just say that I don't specifically agree with your first sentence saying a great day for the Democratic Party. Maybe it is. But it's a great day for our country. And that's why we are so thrilled about it. It's for the people. It should be bipartisan. It should be bipartisan. The fact that they would rather give tax cuts to the richest people at 83 percent of the benefits going to the top 1 percent without any pay for is a stark difference between what we do in this legislation. And I didn't even pay attention to the speech. I don't even listen to, mo to most of the speeches on the other side because they're not fraught with meaning or fact. So I don't have my computer get bothered with that. Uh, but, but the fact is, is that the censure, w they could improve their behavior. They don't have to threaten to kill members of Congress or threaten the life of the President of the United States. So you say, what can we do to bring people together? Well, we can encourage everyone to honor the Rule 23 of the House, which is that you must bring credit uh, to the House of Representatives. But with that, I'm going to yield to my colleagues for any question, uh, answers they may have on the subject of um, your question. Mr. Mr. Neal, did you? I never thought quoting Daniel Webster would have received such a reaction from the Republican leader last night. That seemed to be the theme that uh, he repeatedly came back to. But uh, if I could just emphasize just qu quickly, paid family leave, middle class tax cuts, the child credit, ACA premium credits, we lower health care costs, negotiated drug prices, and we expand ACA. And with that, signing the president's, uh, the president's signature, signature on the infrastructure bill, this is quite a week for the American family. Thank you. Your question? Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Let me figure on the second bullet point on your yes. board there, um, can you respond to the criticism that when all is said and done on this bill, the people who get the biggest tax cut are millionaires who can take advantage of the changes in the state and local tax deductions? Thank you for that question. <clears throat> As a supporter of that particular measure in the bill, I want to just say <clears throat> and thank you for allowing me to clarify what that is about. That's not about tax cuts for wealthy people. It's about services for America's, the American people. In our communities where we have taken care of our people, education, transportation, health care, all of the issues that public service brings to people, 
was slashed by the Trump administration, and we're just turning that over. So this isn't about who gets the tax cut. It's about which states get the revenue that they need in order to meet the needs of the people. And that is a fight that I will continue to make. That, that is still the result, though. I mean, that is still the result. No, it isn't. It isn't the result. Most of it, that isn't the result. The fact is, is that the, the uh, dynamism that is injected into our states for the people is what is important here. And we're not going to have our states with their hands tied behind their back because the former president in the tax scam that they put out there, giving 83 percent of the benefits to the top one percent in our country while penalizing states that were meeting the needs of their people. So let's see this in the perspective that it is. The tax scam of the Republicans added $2 trillion at least to the national debt, giving 83 percent of the benefits to the top one percent, penalizing states who were doing their honoring their responsibilities of public service to the people. We're reverse turning that around. That yes. Yeah, yeah, we have to wait for them to be vaccinated because they are selfishly a danger to other people, including staff people here. Uh, so uh, while we're all hopeful, and I, I join the president in being hopeful, uh, that we can reach a place where it is safe for people to be. What is this, the honor system? The honor system as to whether somebody has been vaccinated? Do you want them breathing in your face on the strength of their honor? So let, let's just see. Um, let's just see. I and mean, again, we have this is about science and governance and science and governance. We have a responsibility to make sure of that the House of the Representatives chamber is not a Petri dish for the, uh, because of the selfishness of some not to be vaccinated or to insist or to wear a mask. Uh, it, because it requires us to wear a mask. I mean, we could come to a place where we say, if you don't want to wear a, ma a mask and you don't want to, if you're not vaccinated, don't even come to the floor. We have facilities up above in the, in the gallery where people can come to vote. We don't want to deter anybody's ability to um, exercise their constitutional duties. We have that responsibility as well. So we're trying to balance everybody being able to exercise their, his or her constitutional duties as well as protect the, secure, the staff, the staff uh, and the other members. Now, as um, I know a lot of things as Speaker of the House. I know a lot of things. And I know a lot about people's predispositions and the rest because they share them with me. And I have to make judgments based on what the vulnerability are of our members as well. But it's not a, shall we say, subjective decision. The uh, 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 attending physician has said, until everybody's vaccinated, we wear masks. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Best possible bill, that's when we'll go forward. But we understand uh, that people need these jobs, 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 jobs. And, as I've said earlier in my comments, this is about addressing saving the lives and the livelihood of the American people. And that's what this legislation will help to do as we address long neglected uh, infrastructure needs. The, we talked history before, some of the water systems in our country are over 100 years old, made of wood and brick. They definitely need to be upgraded, many of them uh, are, have water supplies that are full of lead, not good for children or other living things. And the president spoke so clearly about ridding water of lead for the children. Uh, th there are so many things that are of urgent matter that we'd like to get the bill done soon. I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I called upon my chairman to our chairman to uh, uh, reach across the aisle to see how we can work in a bipartisan way in order to uh, pass le uh, infrastructure legislation because it's always, just almost always been 
bipartisan, nonpartisan. It meets the needs of communities. And again, whether we're talking about additional needs like infrastructure for broadband, uh, for distance learning and, and telemedicine and so many other reasons by, uh, that you're well aware of how people communicate with each other and what a disadvantage it is to rural America or inner city de deserts uh, who are not uh, wired or prepared for all of this. And as the president said, it's not just about broadband infrastructure, it's about the system uh, that we have to replace. So that there's a, a lot to be done. The sooner we can get the legislation done, the sooner we can allocate the resources, the sooner we can uh, reach across America, as, as has, we have been saying, in every zip code to make sure that everyone participates fully. No, I didn't because we were thanking the um, Capitol Police and the custodial staff for making the day possible. So I didn't see it. I, I usually don't see it. Is there anything that you have maybe read about or something that you think from his message that gave you hope that you could work with them or from that message or not? I didn't see it. But, but the one thing I did hear was that he was available, ready to con uh, continue the discussion about the George Floyd uh, Justice and Policing Act. And I think that was a very good uh, message to come from that. And we're very proud of Karen Bass and the work that she has done in a bipartisan way on the House side and now on the Senate side, working with Cory Booker and uh, 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 Senator Scott, for sure, a very important factor in all of this. So that that was one thing that I saw in the news that came out. But I am, um, it's a, for us, when the president comes, whatever the party, whatever the uh, um, capacity, we, it's, a, it's, it's until midnight. And uh, we, the president was very gracious in being willing, not being willing, wanting to, suggesting that he say thank you to the custodial staff who suffered so much at January 6th and who are continued to make the, uh, the, con the capital work as well as the security.